You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. It's great to be here with you again today. Looking forward to joining you on this Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday, where I want to go over two of the most predominant things that I see in my clinical practice on a day-in and day-out basis. Now, we all know that everyone has their own unique manifestation of what they call their disease. Now, their dis-ease in their body might show up as an autoimmune-based issue. Maybe it's sarcoidosis. Maybe it's rheumatoid arthritis. Maybe it's MS. Maybe it's lupus. Maybe it's a form of alopecia or psoriasis. These are all autoimmune-based issues. Or maybe you're dealing with one of the more common ones like Hashimoto's, right? Like all so many people out there right now are dealing with lower thyroid-based issues, autoimmune-based issues. But we'll go deeper on this today because what you think is your autoimmune issue actually has very little to do with the diagnosed autoimmune issue you've been given. And that is a dead giveaway, hopefully, for how you will be able to reverse it. Because if you're constantly working on the name of your disease, you will never, ever get rid of the disease. And I can assure you of that, and I will give you examples today. But we'll go beyond that. Let's say that you have, besides an autoimmune issue, an idiopathic-based issue that I've been given many, many times when I was a 17, 18, 19-year-old, where we don't know what's wrong with you. We know something's wrong with you, but we have no idea what it is. So we're either going to say it's all in your head, or we're going to just shuffle you from specialist to specialist until someone decides to give you some name of some disease. And if we don't have a name of a disease, we'll probably just make something out like Skeeter syndrome that I talked about on a few podcasts before, or any number of a host of issues of made-up based disease names. And why are they made up? Well, they're made up with good intentions to make the patient feel like they've been diagnosed with something, even if it means absolutely nothing. Because what can they do? Well, maybe it's inflammation-based. It will give you these pharmaceutical drugs for that. Or if it's autoimmune-based, well, we'll just decide to shut down that part of your immune system so that you no longer have to deal with these symptoms. Now, when I say it like that, hopefully it seems ridiculous, right? We're going to shut down your immune system so that you don't have to deal with these issues. I want to repeat that one more time. We're going to shut down your immune system so that you don't deal with these symptoms. What they don't tell you is by shutting down the immune system and autoimmune issues, they are shutting down your immunity. That means your immunity to stay well, to not die from pneumonia, to not get the common cold or whatever the other sicknesses are. Keep in mind that everything that you do, health-based, especially pharmaceutical-based, comes with a consequence. And again, I know that doctors are here to try to do their best for you. But the problem is, as they say, if you've only been given that proverbial hammer, you look at everything as a nail. Every single problem is a nail. Oh, okay, I see that. Let's give you this drug. Okay, you have that. Let's give you this drug, right? But that's not how we operate in natural health. We don't have just one hammer. We can look at it from a biology basis. We can use, of course, lifestyle, sleep, diet. We can look at other interventions. We can look at counseling and therapy. We can look at hatha yoga. We can do sauna. We could do stretching. We could use chiropractic to fix mechanical deviations in the spine. We could do soft tissue work. We could use herbs. We could use vitamins. We could use minerals. We can use things that boost detoxification and glutathione. We can work on the brain with neurotransmitters and the precursors to neurotransmitters. We can do all of these things to reset the body. The problem is, most people don't know that they exist. 
if I say things to people or they hear this podcast for the first time, the initial inclination is I don't believe it. I don't, I just don't believe it. And one of the things that I see every day in my practice is that our practice is about 80% women, 20% men. Yes, but 80% women and a lot of women, not all the women, but a lot of women, they go home and they may tell their significant other boyfriend or partner or husband. And they say, well, I don't really believe it because if it were true, my doctor who graduated from XYZ University would have already known about it. And it's really interesting because, again, I'm a guy, so I feel like I can get away with saying this. No one's infallible. And if you were never taught it, how would you ever know about it? Do you really believe that your doctor that went to medical school to learn about, yes, anatomy, physiology, toxicology, oncology, etc.? Do you really think that they were taught anything about nutrition, anything about nutritional supplements, anything even about sauna, they weren't. You can look at a medical school syllabus, and I invite you to do that. You will see that the first two years is learning about all of your ologies, how the body works, disease pathology. But the last two years, you are learning about what pharmaceuticals to use, for what disease of the body. That's it. You are not looking at healthcare. You are looking at sick care maintenance. That is it. And I don't say that in a mean way. I'm actually giving medical doctors the way out here. You have not been taught it. And so how would you know? Just like I've never been taught surgery. You don't want me performing your knee replacement, hip replacement, You don't want me doing any type of cancerous tumor-based removal or open-heart surgery. That would be a really bad idea. And that's because I wasn't taught it. I'm not educated enough and don't have the know-how or residencies to do surgery. I should not be doing surgery. Just like, though, your primary care physician, unless they did a lot of postdoctoral work in integrative health, nutrition, etc., should not be giving you any advice or you should not be asking them for any advice on the topics of healthy living because why would they be able to give you educated advice on healthy living if they never went to school for it? That is what your personal trainer, health coach, nutritionist, functional medicine doctor, anyone that specializes in that, that's what they're for for you, right? Like, You can have more than one practitioner. But keep in mind, if you really want to get well, that's why I'm doing today's show, because it was just like, it's just, it's too much after a while. It's it's too much of just being like, how has no one told me this? You know, we can't reach enough people. Like, I don't know. I want to reach more people. And I'm hoping that you can help me with that. Not for me, but for this message. I don't need any of the credit. I need you to share this information with others, though. Because nobody knows that this exists. There is a way out of whatever you have right now. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, if you've gained too much weight and nobody can help you lose the weight, you can lose the weight. Trust me, you can lose that weight. There is a way out. If you've been dealing with a disease that everyone in your family typically gets and you call it genetic, there is a way out of that too a way out of it for you and every single person in your family. And I don't care if your great, 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 great grandfather and grandmother both had high blood pressure and everyone down the line has had it. You don't have to have it. Same with high cholesterol. You don't have to have these lifestyle-based diseases that it's very easy to blame on genetics. Genetics matter. They matter as to what you will get if your body becomes imbalanced. That's why it matters. When my body became imbalanced, when I filled up my rain barrel and it overflowed from all sides, I got what everyone in my family gets, but just way worse and at 20 years too early, right? Usually you'd get it at, well, probably 30 years too early. Usually you might get it in your 40s, 50s, or 60s. I got it at 17 years old. Why? I was a giant mess. 
I was a mess from so many different things in life. Stress was one of them. We're going to get to a little bit of that in just a moment. But here's the thing. My body was a mess. And when it broke down, it broke down in a very specific way based on what I did to it and based on my genes. Now, everyone in my family gets rheumatoid arthritis, very prone to inflammation in my family. Well, what does that mean? It just meant that when my body broke down, I was going to get an autoimmune issue too. My joints were going to start to hurt. They were going to start to get inflamed. What did I also get? Well, also got adrenal-based issues, HPA axis dysfunction, and in my case, Addison's disease, just worse than most people get it. What else did I have? Well, I had debilitating insomnia and acid reflux and fibromyalgia. Okay, those were other things. What else did I get? POTS. Well, how do you get POTS? Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. You get it from being so depleted that you cannot literally balance your blood pressure and electrolytes. That's how you get it. There is a way out of that too, once you know that that's what it's caused by. An imbalance of aldosterone. That is one of the main reasons, but they never tell you that. They'll do the tilt table test. They'll tell you to take this Florinef to raise blood pressure. They'll tell you to do this to eat more salt, but they don't ever tell you why. Well, what happens is you were stressed for so long or it was so intense, you just blasted your levels of aldosterone up, which made you hold on to a lot of sodium. In the meantime, during fight or flight, then all of a sudden your body collapsed and that all went away. And now you no longer produce that level of glucocorticoid and aldosterone, which helps to retain some of that sodium. So now you're lightheaded every time you stand up. When you go to take a flight of stairs, your heart rate shoots up to 150 beats per minute. Well, there's a reason why. There is always a reason why. And so we have to understand is that someone holds your answer. Someone out there holds your answer. And here's why. There are many people, even though that you don't know them, I want this to be not condescending at all because I didn't know anybody for about a decade who was like me. That's the truth. But I'm telling you right now, there are many people just like you out there. And I know that you feel all alone. You feel like you're the only one suffering from these symptoms, but you're not. There are probably not just a thousand people like you. There's probably a hundred thousand people maybe more. And if you look at dis-ease statistics, meaning how many people have been grouped into this XYZ group, well, it's most likely millions of people like you. Now, there are some more rare diseases, but I always go back to, when did this dis-ease appear in your life? Was it in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, beyond? Yeah, probably somewhere around there, right? Probably somewhere in the 30s, 40s, maybe started to feel it maybe a little bit in your later 20s. If you were a special sick case like me, it might have been in your teens, but probably didn't have it before the age of 10, maybe 12 years old. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that our bodies break down in a very systematic fashion. And that's what I want to share with you right now. Because yes, I could rant and rave all day about how I believe our medical system is broken, how they treat people as a number, how you only get five minutes with your doctor and they're typing on their computer half the time, and that it's not really healthcare, it's simply sick care and disease management with pharmaceuticals. It's more pharmacology than anything else. Now again, I say that knowing that that is what your MD and PCP have to do while they're in the system. And the reason I know this and the reason why I know that they don't even like practicing medicine like this is because, well, for about the last six months previous to that, we were looking to hire a medical director for our company. And as I was hiring a medical director for our company, I got to interview 40, 50 different candidates. We had over 100 people apply in less than a month. That's how much many MDs want to be doing natural health. They have no way out unless they just want to completely get rid of their entire practice that they built their entire life to create to start from scratch, I mean, not many people are going to do that. So again, that is my way out for medical doctors. I'm not blaming medical doctors. I blame the system. What I want you to do today, though, is understand that you are not your disease, nor have you ever been your disease, and I have to get you to disassociate with you as the disease. Because if you don't disassociate with it, 
then you are now not able to move on to the next step, which is healing. And this next part I want to go into right now are the two main ways that are the root cause of most illnesses out there. And I want to share that with you right now. Okay, so right now we are going to go over those two main ways and how they apply, though, to almost every imbalance out there. So keep in mind, you can hold on to whatever it is that you suffer from, but understand that there are levels to this. And as you peel back the onion, you're most likely going to find two ways that your body has broken down, your rain barrel is overflowed, and now you have the symptoms of a disease. So the first part is this. We have so many people out there that get plenty of calories, but they are completely undernourished. So they are literally overfilled with calories, but they are lacking nutrition. They have none. Their bodies are starving for real nutrition. That means they are not getting the vitamins, the minerals, the amino acids, the essential fatty acids, everything that you need from good quality food. And here's why. They've been on fad diets for so long that their body has stopped accepting or really being able to break down and assimilate a lot of those great phytonutrients from carbohydrates. Well, they've gone so low carb for so long or they've been on antibiotics for too long or birth control for too long that they have so much candida overgrowth in their gut, that they have so much bacterial overgrowth in their gut, or they have parasites, or they have H. pylori, or they've been on so much antacid blockers like Prilosec or Zantac, that their body no longer able to break down those proteins well enough. No longer able to create what's called the enterocytes or the villi in the gut to actually break down carbohydrates to absorb the nutrition. So instead, they get all of the foods that they think are good for them fermenting in their stomach because they have no stomach acid or the stomach acid is very low. So now their belly's bloated. And sure, they might get acid reflux, probably not from the stomach acid that they don't have though, most likely because they have a improper lower esophageal sphincter, which is just called the LES, the muscle at the bottom of the esophagus that's supposed to stay closed in the presence of high stomach acid. But it very well could be forced open through a hiatal hernia, or it could be forced open through not enough stomach acid, or when you have a buildup of gas putrefying protein in your stomach, it certainly, or fermenting carbohydrates, can, that gas could push right up through it. So again, is your GI specialist probably ever going to tell you about that? Most likely, no. They're not. But the nice thing is, you could run a stool test and find out if you have H. pylori. That would cause some of that gas buildup. Or you could do an organic acids test, look for bacterial overgrowth, candida overgrowth. Stool tests would test for parasites as well. Now, these aren't things that you have to do, but you have to understand that these things lead to people being undernourished. These documentaries and these films, I understand that they're trying to do good work, but people are not made healthy by depleting their bodies of carbohydrates. The reason that these children and the adults do better when they go low carb for a period of time is because they are no longer feeding the candida overgrowth or the bacterial overgrowth. This is clinically proven if people would take the time to take their education to that next level, not for the patient, but the practitioner. Doctors and practitioners have to know that there are levels to this. If you can't eat fat, you could have something wrong with your gallbladder and liver because you can't produce enough bile. If you can't eat protein, not because you choose to be vegan and you don't want to do animal or fish-based protein. Let's talk about that for a second. If you can't eat it because your stomach gets really bloated and you get super tired, it could be because you're not producing enough stomach acid. And if you can't eat carbohydrates, the third and other macro out there, because you get bloated and you have gas... Well, it's most likely because you have candida overgrowth, you have bacterial overgrowth, you have something that's, that's feeding. That does not make a low-carb diet right for you. It means that you're simply doing one more thing to mask the symptoms. Okay, I'm not going to eat these healthy foods because they cause me digestive distress. And what else happens along this whole path? Well, people are not able to break down, and this is clinically proven, as much calcium or magnesium, or zinc, or B12, their B vitamins. So what happens? Well, their bodies begin to systematically break down over time. 
And what happens when our body breaks down over time? Can't buffer the effects of everyday life as well. You can't detox as well, especially when you have intestinal permeability and leaky gut and all those proteins and bacteria seeping into your bloodstream. Where do they go? Your liver. Your liver has to break these down. Your lymphatic system becomes congested. You start to get puffy. You start to get swollen. You start to gain weight, not because you're eating extra calories, because your body is literally toxic. And we want to blame all of this on people not moving enough and eating too much. Sure, that is the case for a lot of people, but not people that have already been watching their nutrition and moving their body. Not for those people. What about them? What do they need to do? Eat less? How much do you want them to exercise? Eight days a week? There's no more extra time. People have to be able to live a healthy life and maintain equilibrium, maintain balance. But the way to do that is to dig deeper. So here's what happens though. Your body cries out for more and more food and it seems anxious and it's always starving because you eat the food. It should be enough in terms of calories, but it's not in terms of nutrients. And that's because your body is not extracting enough of those nutrients because you are missing a big part of your digestive function. Stomach acid, bile, proper bacterial maintenance in terms of the good probiotics in your gut, or too much bacterial overgrowth, too much candida overgrowth, parasites, or issues with H. pylori in the stomach. Those are the four that we mainly see. But what happens then is that over time, not days, but months and years, the body slowly begins to break down. There are not enough buffers. Your body is made up of what you don't just eat, but what you break down, assimilate, and then can use. Okay, your bones are breaking down. Well, multiple reasons. But if you can't extract good minerals from your food, that's a big reason. Not getting enough vitamin D, that's a big reason. These are things are huge. Your skin absorbs nutrients just like your stomach and, and gut does, all 28 feet of your digestive tract. So if you don't get any sun because you're lathering on an inch of sunscreen every day because your dermatologist or doctor told you to do that to prevent skin cancer, well, then you don't get any vitamin D. So what is there left to do? Well, if you're not going to get any sun, there has to be some form of supplementation. Not mega dose, but it has to be normal dosage. Why? Because you are undernourished now if you're not getting any sun, if you do not take any vitamin D. That's the way that it is. I can't pretend living in Boston that I could get a tan or enough sun, even if I walk during lunch, from October through April. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So I can either pretend, or I can take some nutritional supplementation. I choose to supplement and keep my lab levels where they should be. That's a part of being undernourished. Same thing, if someone's going through a very stressful time, you need more B vitamins. You need more vitamin C. You need more glutamine. You need more zinc. There's no way around it. It's what your body uses to buffer the stress. Now, picture someone on a low-carb, low-calorie diet, plus exercising, plus stressed, plus not sleeping. You think that they might go through their nutrients at a faster rate and not replenishing enough? Yes, absolutely. That is why we are dealing with a generation of people who are absolutely undernourished. They're not getting enough nutrients, not food, but they're not getting enough nutrients to combat what is going on with this next step that I'm about to share with you right now? So keep in mind, there can be breakdowns in digestion or there can simply be a lack of nutrition that is not allowing them now to deal with this next part, which is being overstressed. So people come down to this, undernourished and overstressed. Why are they overstressed? Overstressed because of work, relationships, kids, lack of sleep, too much exercise, too little food too long a fast. All of these things are stresses on the body. I did a show. I, I invite you to check it out previously on, on hermetic-based stressors. All the different things that stress the body. Now remember, stress in the body is good. It's good until a certain point. And then it's actually really bad. You become catabolic. And I did a show showing you all of the hidden signs of people starting to break down faster, of becoming more catabolic. And you can check out all these shows at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. They are all free, every single one of them on a different topic. Today's topic was not to go deep on any one specific health issue, but to share with you how you got here. And trust me, you got here from being undernourished and overstressed because when you are overstressed, here's what happens. You start to typically produce more adrenaline and norepinephrine. 
And that gets you really fired up and can give you energy temporarily. It makes you feel like you can do a million different things and you might not even feel like you need to sleep. So you don't. And you take on more and more. And you start to then produce more cortisol. And it acts as this amazing anti-inflammatory. And you don't even get sick, which is fantastic. And then all of a sudden, you can't keep up any longer because you're undernourished. And you don't get enough sleep. And it compounds. You fill up that rain barrel and you crash. And when you crash... You try to push through more caffeine to get you going in the morning, more antibiotics, more whatever it might be to get you through because life does not stop. And what happens at that point? Well, this is when the hormones become unbalanced as well. Men start to get lower level of testosterone and DHEA. Women, estrogen typically maintains for most of the time, but progesterone begins to plummet. And you get all of the symptoms of thinning of the hair. You get lower thyroid typically with the higher cortisol levels. You start to get more water retention, more cellulite, less muscle tone. Start to maybe get a little bit of acne, adult acne around the chin or jaw. People don't want to be dealing with these symptoms. But the way out is going back and realizing that our bodies want to be well. They want to be healthy. And that we can make them healthy. We really can. But we have to go back to a place of creating what is called dynamic equilibrium. The traditional hygienists, the traditional naturopaths talked about this for so long. Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, it is the principle. They balance each other. There's five elements. They balance. That's what it's all about. It's not about one thing being better than anything else. It's always about balance. So... At the times when you're most stressed in, in life, that's the time to try to get a little bit extra sleep and nourish your body and not go low carb and super hard and exercise. And then when you're able to get a little bit more sleep and life isn't as hard, that's when you can ramp up diet and exercise. But that's just a small example. If you're dealing with major things like acid reflux and Hashimoto's and auto, other autoimmune issues or psoriasis or you name it, anything, You need to go back to the basis. You need to say, what is wrong with my digestion? What's wrong with my gut that I can't absorb the nutrients that I need? And if that's not the issue, if you're like, hey, my gut's great, then you say, what is making me so stressed in life that I wake up feeling anxious? I'm overwhelmed. I have lower mood. I'm irritable. Everything kind of sets me off. And I can't relax my body enough to be able to sleep to slow down, and to be able to rejuvenate. It's one or the other. Now, again, I can put detoxification in. Remember, if your body's undernourished, it doesn't have the phase one and phase two nutrients. I talk about that all the time. People like saying, oh, do my bone broth or do my tea-based detox. They're not detoxes. I have no problem with them, but they are not detoxes. They do not provide the phase one and phase two nutrients to detox. Choose any functional medicine detox you like, but it has to have phase one and phase two nutrients. We can't make things up. We have to use science. We do. It is very important. Okay? So detox will happen naturally if you give your body the natural factors that it needs to keep up. But if you're bringing in more and more toxins, you better be bringing in more and more nutrients. That's the only way, right? Because your body does not have an endless storehouse contrary to popular belief. It doesn't get to draw upon an endless storehouse. Yes, it does for calcium, but that's how you break down your bones. So what you need to do is get it on a daily basis. That's very, very important. People, we deal with a lot of uh, hormone-based issues in our practice. Low testosterone in men, imbalanced hormones, um, especially estrogen dominance in women. What do we do? Well, sure, we're going to give you things to correct those from a natural level, but we're going to be going deep. We are going to be working on root cause-based issues. And you better believe we're going to look at nutrition for your nourishment gut-based health, and also stress. Because if I see your hair tissue mineral analysis and you have elevated calcium magnesium, I know that your central nervous system is stressed. And if I see low sodium potassium, like so many people are, I know that that HPA axis is not working in the same way. And I also know if I look at your thyroid adrenal hormone and I see an underactive thyroid from a functional level and I see elevated evening cortisol, but lower morning cortisol, I know that you're burning out. You're already there. You are no longer keeping up with life's demands. Now, here's the nice thing. You just have to know what to look for. It's there for you. 
And all of it can be overcome. I am not telling you anything that I made up myself. I didn't make this up. I created an integrative health practitioner institute that teaches this, yes, but I didn't make it up. The way that I got well was someone teaching me this. I went through it myself. It is the only way to get well is I learned about the food sensitivities. I learned about all of those things that were creating inflammation in my gut. I had massive amounts of candida, so much so that it overgrew out of my intestines, into my stomach, and up my esophagus. So believe me when I tell you, we know how to help people with candida overgrowth. Same with bacterial overgrowth. I had that. Same with H. pylori. I had it multiple times. The only thing, which is a near miracle, that they never found was parasites. Had everything else. So here's the thing. There's no way anyone can help you in a 25-minute podcast. But what I can tell you is this. This is the answer. If you are not well, this is the answer. If you are overweight, this is the answer. Same if you're not aging well. Now, it's not specific. I know that. And we go into specifics on all. Today was episode 1335. StephenCabral.com forward slash 1335. For the previous 1,334 shows, I give you the specifics. Yesterday was all the reasons why you're losing your hair. On what last week, we go through two minerals that most centenarians have mineral wise. So, like how to burn more body fat. We go through those things. Today, I want you to know that. We've seen, I don't even know how many now, over well over a quarter million people. We stopped counting at a quarter million people. Quarter million client appointments and much, much more online. But what I want to tell you is this. You're going to fall into the categories of your body is not getting the nutrition it needs to keep up with demands. And your body is stressed. So it's going through those minerals at a faster rate. And also stress leads to poor digestion. I'm telling you, even if you only work on those two areas, whether you lab test or you just work with the practitioner in these areas, you're going to do yourself a world of good. And it will permeate into every area of your life. That's the benefit, is that as you get well, everything in your life improves. Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Everything gets better when you have more energy and you start to love life again. You look at life as possibility rather than I'm just going to try to make it through today or this week. Hopefully today's podcast was helpful. I'm here to help. My team is here to help. Let us know how we can help. Simply email in at support at stephencabral.com, support at equilibriumnutrition.com, join the free Facebook group, cabralsupportgroup.com, at stephencabral.com forward slash askcabral for the weekend host calls. Whatever you need from us, let us know. We are here to help and Again, if you want to run any of these labs, head on over to equilibriumnutrition.com. It's our way of open sourcing the ability to find out what is going on inside your body. But no matter what you choose to do, remember, there is an answer. Look towards digestion in the gut. Look towards stress. It's a dead giveaway for the majority of people what needs to be fixed first. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. I appreciate you. And as always, please do help us to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, We also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.